Uh, wrote this I don't know, three or four months ago. I didn't know about that sign right. until you put that on Facebook. There's a hand that I that it by the oh, I mean, it just. You get the gist of it in about 10 or 5 or 6. That's awesome. Subscribe to my Hey, you know, with that thing sitting out there, we'll get some rednecks in there. <laughs> I laughed my butt off when you said that last night. I'm just... And I safely leads me all my journey to this land. Though a pilgrim and a stranger I may be. up mic stands with his guitar.
You didn't have a special for us, Brother Roy? You didn't have a special for us, too? No. Okay. Yeah, that's Karate Roy. <laughs> Did you see him, you know, get out of the way when Jerry was swinging that guitar? I thought he was about to bring in some ACDC or something. Sometimes I call him Roy Clark. I thought he was really good on that guitar. I could play something like that. I'll tell you, when, when the Lord sends me to heaven, he's going to have to give me heart blessings. You know? I can't play anything. You play a radio, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. But if you will, take your Bibles and... Uh, as you notice the furniture up front here, we're going to have the Lord's Supper today. Turning your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. We're so blessed to have our visitors this morning with us. And, Amen. I uh, hope and pray you all uh, find a home here with us, if the Lord will. And uh, we're just so happy to have everybody. You know, we, we see a lot of growth here in Callahan. And, uh, you know, with that growth, we're going to have folks coming. And so... Uh, that's just such a blessing to have that. Amen. Yes, yes. First Corinthians chapter 11. I'm sure everybody's familiar with these scriptures, but uh, you know, we need to be reminded, some churches, they hardly ever have the Lord's Supper. And then some churches, they do it almost every week, or every week. And I don't want it to become commonplace. You know, we... We have Lord's Supper every quarter. We're a little bit late this quarter because of, you know, having Brother Paul come and uh, uh, be uh, our pastor, and uh, we wanted to give him time to, to have some sermons in so we could get to know him and all. But um, every quarter we want to have the Lord's Supper, and it's really a sacred time, and we really need to, you know, stop and think about what we're doing, and we need to understand what the meaning of it is. And that's something that uh, I, I want to kind of start out with. I want us to understand the meaning of the Lord's Supper. It's not just a, a ritual. It's not just, you know, one of the ordinances of the church. I mean, it is an ordinance, but it's really a sacred time to be with the Lord, a time to, to think about what he did for us on that old rugged cross. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the first blood sacrifice happened immediately after Adam and Eve sinned. You know, the very first death, the very first blood that was spilled was when God had to clothe Adam and Eve because of what they had done. And ever since then, through the history, blood had been had to be shed because of sin. 1 Timothy 2.14 says that Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The Lord made garments of skin for Adam and Eve because of what they had done. And we have all sinned. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's right. And Romans uh, chapter 5 and verse 12 it says, Wherefore, as by one man, talk about Adam's, sin entered and into the world. That's all of us. And death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. So, you know, it, it, it's unfortunate, but I mean, that that's what happened. Man had to have his own way. You know, he thought, you know, she, she was deceived by the devil. And oh, Adam, he deliberately sinned because he, you know, followed her and did what she wanted to do. So now let's fast forward. The book of Exodus, you don't have to turn there. But we'll just kind of give a quick review of the book of Exodus that tells us the origin of the Passover. Well, this morning we're not doing the Passover, we're doing the Lord's Supper. But you see in Exodus 6.6, 6, God sent Moses to the Egyptian king and commanded him to set his people free. And of course, you know the story. God brought ten plagues to the land of Egypt, and the tenth plague was what? The angel of death to kill the firstborn. So the night of the Passover, that was the tenth plague. On that night, God told the Israelites to sacrifice a spotless lamb and mark their doorpost and lentils with its blood. Mm -hmm. That's Exodus 12, 21 and 22. Then the Lord passed through the nation 
and he would pass over the household that had the blood. You know, as, as Christians, we, we're passed over from the old devil that we've got the blood of Jesus. If you know Jesus Amen. as the Lord and Savior, we're covered. Yes. That old devil's going to pass over. See, he's going to aggravate us. He's going to give us a hard time. But guess what? There's no weapon that's formed against us that will prosper Isaiah because of Jesus. Yes. But now stop thinking about that verse. It says no form, no weapon will be formed against us. That means the weapon's still going to be formed. There's still going to be weapons against us. If you get saved, you got a target on your back, folks. Mm -hmm. No devil, he knows you. Yeah. You know, you get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, the old devil, he takes note too. Mm -hmm. And we wake up in the morning, the old devil, he needs to say, all right, I, I, I better be on guard. So and so is awake. We need to have that old devil on guard. We need to resist the fiery darts that he throws at us. We need to start our day with the whole armor of God. That's right. Amen. We set our feet on the floor. It better be shod with the salvation. Amen. Yeah. We need to make sure that we start our day with Jesus. That's right. But as we look at this this morning, the whole Old Testament, every book points towards the great sacrifice that was to come. Because think about all the blood sacrifices that had to be given throughout the Old Testament. But what were they? They were just temporary. They had to kill animals. And that animal had to be spotless, had to be perfect, no blemishes at all. And that blood was an atonement for their sins, but it was only temporary. So, you know, we, we need to be so thankful what Jesus did for the, for us on that over the cross. That his blood covers us forever. We don't have to go through that every year as they did back in the Old Testament here. They had to make sacrifices every year. Aren't you thankful we don't have to be butchers? <laughs> well, I tell you, this day and time of Peter and all that, imagine the <laughs> uproar we'd have. Yeah. Killing animals. <laughs> but we don't have to, folks. We don't have to burn candles when somebody dies. Pray them into heaven. <laughs> if you're saved, you're going to heaven. That's right. Cut and dry, that's it. You know, we got to come to Jesus with a childlike faith. Sometimes people are so intellectual, they can't grasp that simple concept. Mm -hmm. They want to add to it. They want to make it complicated. They, they want to say, well, we, we, we need to do this or we need to do that. No, we don't need anything but Jesus. That's right. He did it all. That's right. To see people don't want to grasp that concept. They want to think that they have to do something. It's Jesus plus nothing. That's right. We just need to be obedient. And that's a big word. It's hard to be obedient. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if we take our feet and set them on the floor, that's when that obedience needs to kick in. Because every step we take throughout our day, we're going to have challenges. We're going to have the devil firing his darts at us are we going to fall for those darts? Or are we going to say, Jesus, handle this for me? Mm -hmm. Resist the old devil and he'll flee. That's right. We've yeah. got to do that. Now as we move on, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. we got to see here now what Jesus has done for us. Let's go back to uh, verse 17 of chapter 11. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not that ye come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For the first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I partly believe it. But there must be also heresies among you, that they which are fruit may be made manifest among you. Verse 20. Now you come together, therefore, into one place. This is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh 
before others his own supper. And one is hungry, and the other is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat, and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? I praise you not. For I have received of this Lord, of the Lord, that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. As often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whatsoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he hath eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, in other words, die. For if, ye, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chast chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, care, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Let's pray, Lord God, we do thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, I ask you that you would just hide me behind the cross. Lord, that you would just bind the old devil and his demons from this place. Lord, clear my mind of the garbage of this world. Lord, help me to not stumble and stammer. And Lord, you are not the author of confusion, Lord. Please, Lord, do not allow me to make things confused, Lord. Your word is clear. Help me, Lord, preach your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, here Paul is telling them, you know, Jesus was at here betrayed by the power of man. He was betrayed by Judas. We know the story there. And, you know, when Jesus did this, he gave thanks. And he gave thanks. He was giving this Lord's Supper. He gave them that example for us. And if we were to do it in remembrance of Jesus, what he did for us on that old rugged cross. Jesus himself used the analogy of bread to represent his broken body. We take that bread, you know, we just have little wafers that we use, but some churches, they, they actually tear off a piece of bread. And, you know, it shows that his body was broken for us. You know, he says, this is my body. So in taking the bread, we remember that Jesus' body was broken for us. The Passover meal was unleavened bread. You know, Brother Jerry mentioned that this morning in, in Sunday school. A little bit of leaven, you know, can ruin the whole lump. Uh -huh. And that's, leaven is representing sin. You know, we're not to come to the Lord's Supper with unconfessed sin. Mm -hmm. Before we take the Lord's Supper, I'm going to open the altar. And I want anybody who feels led to come and pray. If you feel like you've broken your fellowship, not your relationship, but your fellowship with the Lord Jesus, you know, we need to get that thing right. Mm -hmm. We don't want to come to him unworthily. Amen. Now, I always feel unworthy. But we can do it worthily through confession of our sins. Jeremiah 31, 31, it says there's a new relationship to be established where laws are a matter of the heart. It says in Jeremiah 31, 
and 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, right in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Amen. Ain't that a blessing? Amen. Yes. And he can be our God, and we can be his people. Yes. But we got to make sure that relationship is right. That's right. That's right. Just like the prodigal son, when he stepped away, he lived like the world, but he was still the man's son. That's right. He still had that relationship, but he had broken fellowship. So you have to get that thing right. Paul teaches here that the shedding of Christ's blood is a propitiation for our sins. It's, in other words, it's a substitute that Jesus took on that we deserve. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a big word called uh, uh, imputation. You know, not amputation, but you know, his righteousness is imputed unto us. And our sin was imputed onto him when he died on our rugged cross. He nailed that thing on the cross. And his blood covered our sin. Mm -hmm. Yes. We aren't just remembering Jesus as his death, but we're remembering that he forgave us for our sins. That we can be his people. This is the core of the New Testament. You know, the New Testament is the new covenant. We're not under the old law anymore. That's right. Brother Jerry mentioned in Sunday school. We don't have to worry about slaughtering animals anymore. We've got Jesus. That's right. You know, there's four cups that Jesus mentioned in, in the Passover, or that they mentioned in the Passover. The first one was sanctification because they brought the Egyptians out of the bondage of the, of, of the Israelites out of the bondage of the Israel, of the Egyptians. I can quit stammering here. The second is a blessing. It says, I will free you from being slaves. You know, we're free from the slave slavery of sin. Amen. We don't have to be slaves to that sin. Those old shackles was, was broken off when we got saved. But you know, sometimes we willingly put those shackles back on us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We want to take things in our own control. Mm -hmm. We want to do things our own way. The next thing you know, we're sinning. We're taking it out of God's hands and putting it in our own. The third cup is redemption. And that is where he redeems us. The fourth cup is acceptance. As I said a moment ago, he's our God and we're his people. Amen. Amen. But see, the Lord is using the third cup here in the Lord's Supper. Because it's redemption. He's redeemed us. Revelations 19 9 says, And he saith unto him, unto, unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are true sayings of God. You know, when we take communion, what are we doing? We're proclaiming what Jesus did for us. You know, we're recording this this morning. There's people watching. And they see what we're doing. That's what the Lord's Supper is about. It's not just a thing we just think about. We actually do it. We actually take the bread. We actually take the juice. It's a physical thing that we can do because the lost will see it. We see the Lord's Supper parts that we have here, the juice and the wafer. We can touch it. We can smell it. We can taste it. See, we share that with the onlookers that are watching us. You know, when you're out and about, people are watching. And I say that almost every Sunday. People are watching us. We've got to be careful. We've got to watch our testimony. Because we have people watching us. This morning as we take this, we're going to be recording this. We're going to have people watching us. We're testifying what Jesus did for us in that old rugged cross. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Verse 27, Paul warns that those who take part in the Lord's Supper must do it in a worthy manner. To participate unworthily is to become guilty of the same type of disrespect that Jesus got <coughs> from that angry mob when they hung him out of a rugged cross. 
you're just spitting in his face if you just live like the world and take the Lord's Supper. We need to confess our sins, ask the Holy Spirit to con you know, bring out any unknown sin that we have. Lay it on that old altar. We need to give Jesus our whole life 100% before we take this this morning. You know, this is the most important part of the Lord's Supper, especially for the pastor. Because, you know, as your pastor, you're, you're the flock, you're the sheep. I don't want you to take this unworthily. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you're right with the Lord. Mm -hmm. That you have the right relationship, or not relationship, but fellowship with the Lord. So many people, you know, they, they'll take it and, and they're taking it unworthy. They go on, they just go out and they just live like they want. They go on and sin. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously we're going to sin. We're, you know, we're human. But, you know, we, we need to try to take that sin and lay it on this altar. When we leave here today, try to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Amen. That's not easy to do, but we've got to do it. Verse 28 talks about a self-examination. We should put emphasis on celebrating the Lord's Supper, but self-examination has to be included. We need to pray for the Holy Spirit to show us any sins, like I said. We've got to make sure that we ask the Lord to forgive us for anything that we've done. Mm -hmm. By taking the Lord's Supper in a worthy manner, this is with self-examination. You search your hearts. You think about, you know, everything that you've done. And, you know, like I said, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We all sin. But we can take that sin and we can lay it on the cross. We can lay it on the altar. We need to be reconciled with Jesus. You know, we're all forgiven when we ask Jesus into our hearts. Yes. But we still have to die daily because that old sin is alive and well. That old man is alive and well in us. We have to ask the Lord to help us. Paul isn't talking about some kind of magical element of the Lord's Supper as if it was a, a wrong attitude or something like that. And, you know, it's a prison where it causes uh, sickness and death and all that. Paul is saying that the atmosphere of hostility needs to be out of our life. We can't have animosity towards our brothers and sisters. Amen. If right. there's somebody in your life that you're having problems with, you need to get that thing right. You need to lay that on the altar. And when you leave here, you need to talk to that person and get that thing right with them. Because that is a dysfunctioning congregation. We need to be a, you know, a congregation that is right with the Lord have a right relationship to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. It's like a father correcting his children. You don't let your kids go crazy because, you know, you, you love them. No, you, you correct them because you love them. Mm. You don't want them to do this and that and the other because they can hurt themselves. That's they right. can hurt somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's the same as the Holy Spirit. He's correcting us. Verse 31 and 32 if we all practice a sincere self-judgment focusing on our own areas that we need to correct, we are less likely to judge others. You don't have time to judge yourself, judge y'all. I'm too busy judging myself. <laughs> you know, that's the way we ought to look at it. We don't have time to worry about what some, somebody else is doing. The last week I preached on the fruit of the Spirit, and, you know, what I said is about, you know, when somebody gets a thing of vegetables or fruit, what do we do? We look at them. We, we look them over. I got a bag of oranges the other day at Winn Dixie's. Like the next day, three or four of them already had green fur on them. What I do, I had to pull them out. But you see, we can't do that with each other. Spiritually, we need to hang on to each other. We need to correct each other. We need to pray for one another. We need to be accountable to each other. This is our family, folks. Amen. One day we're going to be in glory land. One day, as Brother Roy was preaching or singing in the uh, music program this morning, one day we're going to be in that glorious, beautiful home, beautiful heaven. We better get used to each other right here and now. Amen. Amen. 
because we're going to be together throughout eternity. That's right. And we've got to have that right relationship with each other. So if you have anybody in your heart that you're holding against anything, any animosity, you need to get that thing right. Yes. yes. You know, the time of the Lord's Supper is a great opportunity for us to focus on ourselves, not anybody else. It's a time for us to self-examine. It's a time for us to think about the sacrifice that Jesus did for us on a rugged cross. Verses 33 and 34, Paul finishes the section with two simple guides to help solve the Corinthians' problem at the Lord's Supper. You know, they, they were abusing that supper. He was like, you got your own houses. You go eat, drink, get drunk, go to your house. <laughs> this is the Lord's house. This is, you know, you need to take this thing seriously. This is what we are here to do, to take the Lord's Supper. So there was problems with the Corinthian church at that time. It says that they should tarry. In other words, they should wait until everyone arrives before beginning. This is a matter of mutual respect and concern. Some Corinthians who worked on Saturday, they were not free to come and, and worship. So, you know, they, they, they were being impatient with them. They were, you know, it's a sign of disrespect. The second thing is expectations of the meal are causing problems. So Paul advises that everyone eat at home. As I said, he's like, don't you have houses to eat at? Why are you coming here to abuse the Lord's Supper? Getting drunk, pigging out. We're here to worship the Lord. A large group, you know, they have to realize that they're here for the Lord to take His supper and to focus on what He did for us on our already cross. So as I said this morning, I want to open up this altar. Anybody here that feels like you, you know, falling short your your fellowship is not where it needs to be with the Lord now's the time to come to this altar brother Roy if you want to play something for us I just want to open this altar because I never want to have the Lord suffer and not have an opportunity to get things right before we partake because we need to make sure that thing is right As Brother Roy plays, we're just going to take a moment and pray. And if you, you know, like I said, if you want to come to this altar, now's the time to do it. If you, you know, having an issue in your life, maybe somebody in your life that you're not right with, you need to get that thing right. And as your pastor, you know, we are accountable to you. We have to be extra careful. We have to examine even more of our lives.
going ahead and uh, partake of the Lord's Supper for the body, if you would. We want our board members to participate in this and uh, pass that around. Let me go ahead and take mine. As we look at this, Brother Bobby hands it out. Stop and think about what you're doing here. Look at this thing. You see the wafer. You see the juice. You know, we're, as I said a moment ago, this is a physical representation of what we're doing, thanking Jesus for what he did for us on a rugged cross. And onlookers can see that we want to worship our Lord and Savior and thank him for what he did for us. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my body. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, again, Jesus, thank you, Lord, for that blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you covered us, that you redeemed us, mm -hmm. that we can be, be your child and you can be our God. Lord God, help us, Lord, to remember what you did for us on the cross. The Lord, even more, we thank you, Lord, that on the third day you rose again. And one day we're going to rise again. Yes. When we breathe our last breath, you're going to take us up. We'll be with you in glory. And we thank you. We thank you for that, Lord. You're not still in the grave like old Buddha and all those other so-called gods. We thank you that you rose again. As we take this, Again, as we read from verse 25, this cup is the New Testament of my body. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Thank you. 
thankful that we serve a risen Savior. Amen. Yeah. We can come to his plate, his table, and we can worship him. And people are watching. Yes. And we go out those doors, people are watching. When you have your meal today, think about this, what Jesus did for us. And the meal we shared today together as family. The family of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Anybody got anything out? Any comments? Any anything? Thank you, brother. Well, amen. We're going ahead and close the prayer. Pray that you have a blessed day. Be that salt and that light that we need to be. Amen. You know, as I've said so many times, when you open up a door in a dark room, you're in the lit room, you open that door, what happens? That light goes into that dark room. That dark doesn't come into the light room. We've got to be that light. We've got to be that salt. Sometimes salt stings. Amen. People don't always want to hear what we have to say. But we got to say it. That salt also preserves. It gets rid of decay. We're, hey, folks, we're the only answer this world has. Mm -hmm. That's right. Not because of us, because of Jesus. Amen. We've got the answer. Amen. It's that old rugged cross. What Jesus did for us. Amen. 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 Paul, if you would, close us prayer, please. Dear Grace Assembly, Father, thank you for this time, Lord, that you've given us to come to your house, Lord, and worship you and, and take communion, Lord, with one another, Lord. Such a blessed time, Lord, that yeah. we come together, Lord, in reverence of you, Lord, and what you've done, Lord, what you went through, Lord, before the cross, on the cross. And, Lord, we praise you, Lord, now for what you're still doing after the cross, Lord. Yes, that's right. Lord, we just pray now, Lord, as we leave this building, Lord, that we go out, Lord, and we be that salt, Lord, we be that light, Lord, and we just spread the gospel, Lord, just spread the good news, Lord to that lost person, Lord, that's in a grocery store, that's at the gas station, Lord. Give us that courage, Lord. Give us that yes, courage, right. Lord, to spread your word, Lord, in truth, Lord, and in spirit, Lord. Watch over us today, Lord. Watch over our families, Lord. Give us strength, Lord, for each day, Lord. And as, as 2 Corinthians 13, 5, Lord, you laid that on my heart to say, I'm just going to say it, Lord. As Apostle Paul, so Paul he said, examine yourself yeah. daily to right. see that we are of the faith, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that we get into your word, Lord, more and more each day, Lord, and we just grow, Lord, and just grow. Just be with us, Lord, through each and every day. For all this we ask in sweet, precious, holy name. Amen. 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 Y'all have a blessed day. Next Sunday, Brother Paul will be back behind the pulpit. So yes. Amen. Looking forward to that. I'll be praying for that. Praying yeah, for it. Get to hear some real preaching. No, not at all, bro. I study more than I, I stutter more than you. <laughs> you know, I, I don't have a stage fright or nothing like that. But you know, when you're behind the pulpit, you're not just speaking to people; you're speaking to the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and that awesome responsibility can just overwhelm you sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's sometimes hard to. To deal with, you know, the devil, he, he just wants to mess you up. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make him stutter. <laughs> but guess what? You remember old Moses, what he told God, I can't do this, I stutter. Yep. You know? So what did he do? He brought Aaron. Me and you, what kind of errands each other? You know? <laughs> when I give him up on, he fixes it. Amen, amen. Yeah. But we're, if you're, saved, if you're saved today and the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior, keep this in mind. We are ambassadors of Christ. That's right. And that is a level that is not down here, but that is a level of up here. And we're only here because of Christ. So keep that in mind today, guys. And I, and I used to tell people all the time when I worked with that one company, I drove for that one company, and all the drivers that was in that division, we come together every morning, we prayed. And we studied the Word, and, and then eventually God intervened and came in and gave us the, the safety building and I'll just say it, it was at J.B. Coxwell gave us the safety building and every Friday morning 
we had Bible study from 5.30 to 6, and everybody in the company was welcome.